I recently read the book, The War of Art, by author Stephen Pressfield. Author Stephen Pressfield is an acclaimed fiction writer who's been battling an internal demon for decades. No, he's not crazy. He's fighting the same internal enemy you and I fight every day. That enemy is called resistance. Most of us have two lives, Pressfield says. The life we live and the unlived life within us. Between the two stands resistance. You see, we're all creative people, and we all have the capacity to produce something original and inspiring. But very few of us do, because resistance holds us back. Resistance is like the Terminator. It's programmed to kill our creative spirit and prevent us from realizing our potential. Resistance is the antagonist on every creative journey. If we want to do something creative, resistance fills our head with self-doubt. If we dream of starting a YouTube channel or writing a book, resistance convinces us we have nothing to say. If we dream of being a creative freelancer, resistance will convince us we're not talented enough. And if we consider designing a product and starting a business, resistance will tell us we have too much to lose. Resistance urges us to indulge in immediate pleasure and forget our creative aspirations. Resistance urges us to have an extra glass of wine and sleep in the next day. Resistance urges us to get dessert after dinner so we feel too lethargic to work afterwards. It even convinces us to do idiotic things to avoid our calling. When world-renowned author Robert McKee attempted to start a new book, resistance convinced him to try on every piece of clothing in his closet first. If we let resistance bully us around and distract us from living our creative lives, we will wind up bitter, angry, and unfulfilled. Author Stephen Pressfield says, you know, Hitler wanted to be an artist. At 18, he took his inheritance and moved to Vienna to live and study. He applied to the Academy of Fine Arts and later to the School of Architecture. Ever see one of his paintings? Neither have I. Resistance beat him. It was easier for Hitler to start World War II than it was for him to face a blank square of canvas. So it begs the question, how do we defeat resistance? How do we avoid becoming bitter, angry, and unfulfilled? Well, first, we must embrace it. If we're considering a creative project and we feel distracting urges and intense anxiety, that's a good thing. Pressfield says, if you're feeling massive resistance, the good news is it means there's tremendous love there. If you don't love the project that is terrifying you, you wouldn't feel anything. The opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. The more resistance you experience, the more important your unmanifested art project or enterprise is to you, and the more gratification you will feel when you finally do it. Resistance is our guide to fulfillment. When we feel lost and overwhelmed, resistance is our guiding compass, our true north. When I'm unsure which book to read and summarize next, I should pick the book that both interests me and gives me anxiety. If you're an aspiring entrepreneur with a long list of business ideas, you should pick the business idea that both excites you and terrifies you. If you're an actor and you don't know what role to take next, take the role that scares you. After we learn to embrace resistance, we must face resistance. Navy SEAL Commander Mark Devine tells new Navy SEAL recruits that they're all walking around with two invisible wolves, a fear wolf and a courage wolf. The fear wolf is resistance. It feeds on your fear of it. We have a choice every day. We can either avoid our calling, give in to resistance's demands, and feed the fear wolf, or face resistance and feed our courage wolf. Author Stephen Pressfield feeds his courage wolf by sitting down to write at his desk at precisely 10.30 a.m. every day, regardless of how he feels. He starts writing and doesn't stop until he's exhausted, which is typically three to four hours. He doesn't care how many pages he's produced or if his writing's any good. All that matters, he says, is I put in my time and hit it with all I've got. All that counts is that for this day, for this session, I have overcome resistance. If we commit to sitting down with resistance for a set amount of time every day, something magical happens. It's as though our efforts are being rewarded by a divine power. It's as though we've been given an angel for a day. Pressfield says, when we sit down each day and do our work, power concentrates around us. We become like a magnetized rod that attracts iron filings. Ideas come, insights accrete. Soon resistance goes away and the experience is enjoyable, but only for the remainder of that day. Resistance will be waiting for us on the battlefield tomorrow. If we can find the courage to face resistance tomorrow and the next day and the day after that, without giving in to its demands, we will discover what we were born to do. Author Stephen Pressfield says, if you were meant to cure cancer or write a symphony or crack cold fusion and you don't do it, you not only hurt yourself, 
or even destroy yourself. You hurt your children. You hurt me. You hurt the planet. Creative work is not a selfish act or a bid for attention. It's a gift to the world and every being in it. Don't cheat us of your contribution. Give us what you've got. That was the core message that I gathered from The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. This book is loaded with amazing metaphors to explain the creative process. I highly recommend this book to anyone who's struggling on their creative journey. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.